Hey guys, welcome back to Day Day 2K Universe Mode. Tonight, starting off at NXT, William Regal appears on screen to start off the night, announcing that we will have an NXT Championship number one contenders match later tonight. He then reminds us that Big E is challenging Karrion Cross to use his rematch clause for the NXT Championship tonight, rather than waiting until the first takeover of the year. And now, we're starting off the night with a new addition to the Fandango's Ballroom Challenge. And tonight's opponent for Fandango, representing NXT, is the Samoan Destroyer, Samoa Joe. And this match would be rough for Fandango, who'd end up being on the receiving end of what I could only describe as a brutal Ballroom Blitz. Samoa Joe very quickly adds another dance partner to the tally for NXT, with Joe beating Fandango in much faster fashion than what Austin did yesterday. We'll see if SmackDown can compete with this time or not, but until then, we've got the rest of NXT to get to, so let's not waste any more time. Next, Karrion Cross appears backstage in a boiler room and has Scarlett Bordeaux announce that he has accepted Big E's offer and will now use his rematch clause, despite his weak showing last week. And now for our next match, we've got a battle to see which Drew is superior as the Philadelphian Drew Gulak, accompanied by Chad Gable, takes on the Scottish Drew. Drew McIntyre, who brought a whole sword with him. Gable has a presence, yes, but I feel like bringing a lethal weapon is a bit overkill. That said, Gulak would start off the fight by taking control with some strikes. Of course, you don't want to try and go strike for strike with Drew McIntyre, especially when you are 70 pounds lighter than him. I do respect Gulak's commitment, but he'd get hit with a Future Shock DDT for his troubles and perhaps reach an early end to his night. Nope. Nope. Gulak manages to kick out a two. Gable would end up distracting McIntyre soon afterwards, showing off the numbers advantage, before Gulak would turn McIntyre inside out with a ripcord lariat. Gulak would connect with a Southern Light suplex that'd nearly land on a steel chair introduced by Gable. However, the referee would move it out of the way. The Southern Lights would be followed up by Gulak's vicious dragon sleeper, but despite an incredible amount of torque, the match would continue and McIntyre would be free. McIntyre would recover by connecting with a quick Future Shock DDT, but once again Gable would make his presence felt by distracting McIntyre and allowing Philly Drew to hit another Ripcord Lariat. This one would very nearly put McIntyre away, but unfortunately for Gulak, this match isn't contested under the rules of horseshoes or hand grenades.
After getting busted open by the Scottish warrior, Gulak would be fired up and would lock in another dragon sleeper, using adrenaline to add some extra torque, threatening to break McIntyre's neck until McIntyre would ultimately tap out. He's showing off the wounds of battle, but Drew Gulak defeats Drew McIntyre via submission tonight. However, the legitimacy of his victory does have to be brought into question after multiple interferences from Chad Gable. Whether we'll see a rematch with Gable being barred from ringside, or with McIntyre bringing back up, will have to wait to be seen. Next, Sami Zayn comes out to the ring and demands that he is added to the number one contenders match because of his quote unquote obvious screw job that occurred last week. He claims that he tapped Orton out on the outside and pinned him to completion multiple times last week. He threatens that if he isn't added to the triple threat, then there is a conspiracy. Regal comes out and denies a conspiracy and pokes holes in his theory. He then rejects his deal to put him in the contenders match. Instead, he brings out his opponent for tonight, Matt Riddle. Out of the gate, Riddle would absolutely eviscerate Sami Zayn with vicious strikes of all kinds. Riddle would go for the floating bro, but by the looks of it would come up just a bit too short, although his leg does appear to still make contact with Zayn's ribs. Either way, perhaps out of embarrassment or just quick thinking viciousness, Riddle would drop Sami again with a roundhouse before gaining control of the back and plastering Sammy with hammer fists to the side of the head. He would then lock in the bro mission. Riddle would ultimately release the hold on Sammy, but it doesn't appear to have been an act of mercy considering how Riddle jumps right back onto Sammy. The match would ultimately end after a bro Derek. Matt Riddle with a dominating and imposing victory over Sami Zayn, who appeared to be too focused on a so-called conspiracy against him to even fight back against the former UFC fighter. At least it wasn't Brock Lesnar or Goldberg. I'm sure it would have ended up much worse for Sammy. And now we've got our first featured match of the night with tag team action. Imperium, Fabian Eichner and Marcel Bartel, accompanied by Walter, take on the usually unified Mustache Mountain, Tyler Bate and Trent Seven. I wonder if there's a particular reason they came out separately or not. In this tag team competition, we're going to see Fabian Eichner and Marcel Martel is standing in their way of victory, we see. And look at this now, yes, applying the submission hold. And a very quickly chance. From behind. German suplex. Oh! Right to the back. Drops the hammer right on the lower back. Chop that'll wake you up. Kick to the gut. All the way up. Very effective cyclone bomb. Tag made. <laughs> That's gonna sting. Oh, he fights bait back. Go oh, right to the kidneys. Golly. Oh, bait was ready for that. Setting it up. Brain buster. 
He's taking some good hits. What makes a great tag partner, Cole, is knowing when to tag. We'll find out soon enough if he's even a good tag partner. Bad predicament right here. Man, over the top into a rough landing. Totally vibing with the WWE Universe right now. Able to get there in time. Perhaps thinking about what to do next here. Check your face out of that one. Oh, hanging off for dear life. Looking for a burp. Lightner's attack gets reversed. Stops the kick. And Trent Seven able to avoid impact. Some tough hits now. These two teams have gone to war, Cole. Of course, they're going to wind up with a few battle scars. Nice counter from Trent Seven. Oh, right to the kidneys. Golly. Tagged into action. Snap. Oh, back baits attack. Oh, 
He's in off the tag. This is just brute power. Release German. Getting out, but doesn't have a clue what's coming at him. of this moment is coursing through his veins. And tag, he did it. Let's go. Watch out. Just mounted with punches. And not, oh, a nasty stop to finish it off. Martell plans in motion. I think we know what's coming next. From the top rope. Beautiful drop kick. And a reversal by Tyler Bates. Control here. Face first in the turnbuckle. Uncorked a big punch. He takes control. Bait with a kick to the gut. Double Tyler Driver 97. Eigner is done. This 
was over. He wins with a devastating submission. And that's it. Scores the win for the team. Unified front or not, Mustache Mountain picks up the win for British Strong Style via submission after forcing Fabian Eichner to tap out to the Billy Goat's curse. With William Regal certainly scouting to find the first NXT Tag Team Champions of the season, perhaps Mustache Mountain have just given themselves a strong case to be worthy contenders. Speaking of worthy contenders, up next Charlotte Flair once again has an open challenge, continuing her quest to find a woman in the NXT locker room worthy of facing her to decide the first NXT Women's Champion in this new era of the Black and Gold brand. Tonight, answering Flair's challenge is the fiery Thunder Rosa. Is Thunder Rosa the one that will face Flair for the NXT Women's title? Or will Charlotte Flair cross another name off the list? We talk a lot about Charlotte's gracefulness in the ring, so I suppose it really is no surprise that she insists on being called the queen of WWE. Yeah, but not just the queen of WWE, Cole, the queen of all eras. A title she earned, a title she's maintained with every distinguished move she makes in the ring. Every devastating statement she makes against the peasants, she lowers herself to face for the enjoyment of the unlocked masses. Charles point of certainly has legs, but I sometimes wonder if you realize we don't actually live in a monarchy, Corey. But she'll be challenged by a woman who's shown a high acumen in the ring. There's nothing you can throw at her that she hasn't already devised an answer for. Stomping down! Stiff kick! She's staying elusive! Nice leg pick. Oh, weakening the leg here. Spinning arm breaker! Looking bad for her here. The Queen came into this match with the express purpose of putting a beating on a peasant. And that up high. Wow. Cross body. Oh, look at this aggression. Just pure brutality. Come on, easy. We all know Charlotte has all the tools to any match she competes in. But Corey, can you think of any specific strategy for her tonight? Cole, you're absolutely right about Charlotte already having all the tools. She needs to focus and remember that, which honestly shouldn't be a problem for her. She's Charlotte Flair. Dangerous position here, guys. Oh, no, 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 Back no. suplex. Nasty. The hardest part of the ring. Now, look at this aggression. Just oh. pure brutality. Come on, easy. She's getting fired up, ready to show her opponent what she's got. Three, four. Heads out of the ring. What's next? Double underhook applied. Charlotte is stepping up there. And the Queen of Ireland is making a definitive statement with that move. In fact, let's call it a royal proclamation. Uh, Charlotte Flair ruling with an iron fist. Whatever's 
plan here can't be good. Lands face first. What a drop kick. Uh-oh. Carefully measured. Uh-oh. All measured up. What a drop kick to the spine. She's starting to drag a little bit. This is where endurance becomes so important in the late stages of the match. A helpless Charlotte. Does it mean the end is near? Scooped up. Look out. That might topple the queen. Charlotte knows she's in a fight now. That move only enraged her more. The Queen's looking to make heads roll. You got to get a lot of credit here. Withstanding what has taken out many other competitors. We knew we were in for something special between these competitors, but they are taking things over their own limits. Flair just ragdolled to the outside. She heads out of the ring. Interesting strategy. Well scouted by Charlotte. Elbow smash. Ooh, she just turned it around. Down across the neck. And Flair gets that turn back on her. Up. Oh, drop kick to the spine. Six. Now we're cutting it kind of close, don't you think? You could say that again. Time to get the lead out. Eight. She heads out of the ring, but she needs to pay attention to the ref's count. Oh, slap. Oh, what a shot. Try as she might, Thunder Rosa still ultimately submits to Charlotte Flair and her figure eight leg lock. Week two, challenge two, and the second opponent falls to Charlotte as she continues her search to figure out the ideal contender to make history with. Up next, our third featured match and our co-main event. Stay tuned for the non-featured main event NXT title match, but our co-main event will decide the number one contender to the winner of the main event as the Prince Finn Balor takes on the Viper, Randy Orton, and the so far impressive Isaiah Swerve Scott. Which of these three men will prevail and become the number one contender to either Big E or Karrion Cross? This is an all-out brawl right out of the box. What should the approach be, Corey, to not get hit? If you're on defense, find a way to avoid the variety of attacks that a no-deep match allows. 
If you're on offense, stay on the attack because anything goes. It is so important to know when to create separation and when to go on offense. Oh, Ooh, Roundhouse connects. Oh, launching himself from the ropes. Oh, man, what a kick. What kind of headspace do you need to be successful in a no disqualification match? A ruthless one, Cole. You can't show any remorse about going after your opponent full of force. Anytime you waste second-guessing yourself, it's time for your opponent to get their hands on the weapon. Being carried around with ease. Snake eyes. Had the Viper scouted. Powders. Of that last hit. And Swerve expected that. Got him where he wants him. Up and Swerve gets stopped in his tracks. Right to the kidneys from behind. Oh, ouch. Delivered into the barricade. Oh, man. Look at this. Oh, barricade. In control here with it. Okay, already we get it. Stop looking for adulation for the crowd to get back into the fight. And that fire to hit the mark. We're going to be totally with the WWE Universe right now. Corner. Oh, 
Swerve expected that. from this high point. Thor, that hurt, what a counter, crash landing. 
Lined him up. Boom! Knock him down. Out. Finn Balor for control here. 19-16. Did Finn push this? This means Finn has to adjust. Finn needs to reconstruct his game plan. The WWE Universe willing these superstars on. Pumping the adrenaline they so desperately need right now. And the electricity of this moment is coursing through his veins. Went in the arm. Not done yet. Into the arm breaker. Hammer lock. Soul. The adrenaline is pumping, and the WWE Universe is on its side. Swerve manages to counter. Ooh, what a oh, man, a little extra luster behind that kick. A uh, jumping stop to the gut. Just breaking down the opponent. Off the turnbuckle. What's he gonna do? From the top, double stop. Explodes through the chest with the stop. <laughs> this one has to be over. Looking for the victory. Two. He kicked out of two. Within inches of victory, only to have it snatched away. This match just keeps getting more and more exciting. Holton a bit dismayed, but we know the Vipers are definitely remaining on the offensive. Counters the Vipers attack. Counters that. Despite what can only be described as a star-making performance from Isaiah Swerve Scott, he ultimately wasn't even a factor in the finish to this match, as the Prince Finn Balor defeats Randy Orton after connecting with a coup de grace. And now, Finn Balor eagerly awaits to see who will be the winner of the NXT title match coming up next, with his sights still firmly set on that championship no matter who wins between the two competitors. And now there's been enough talking about it. It's time for the main event. Karrion Cross, accompanied by Scarlett, uses his rematch clause to challenge a Big E for his NXT championship. This match was an absolute slugfest a hoss fight between two powerhouses that would shake the Capitol Wrestling Center to its foundations. Big E would connect with a big ending. But Karrion Cross would kick out at two, shocking the NXT champion, who, despite an attempted distraction from Scarlett, would show off his incredible strength and hold Cross up high above his head.
but Biggie would lose control of his temper, and because of it, Cross would take advantage, busting the current NXT champion open with a vicious knee strike before locking in the Cross jacket. Biggie would be forced to submit, giving us a brand new NXT champion. Doomsday prevails as Karrion Cross is once again the NXT champion. However, his reign may be cut short as he has to worry about not only the newly decided number one contender, Finn Balor, but also the now former champion, Big E who may utilize his rematch clause. And with that, this week's edition of NXT comes to a close. If you liked what you saw, hit that like button. If you are new here and you want to see more universe mode or just more content from me in general, hit that subscribe button. I don't care if the bell. Uh, hopefully next week's edition won't take a month for me to uh, get out, especially since we're trying to race against the clock here to uh, not be a whole year behind on 2K23 when that comes out, but uh, I digress. Uh, SmackDown will be coming out tomorrow, so make sure to come back for that. If you want to follow me on any of my other social medias, Instagram, Twitter, if you want to follow my Twitch account or join my subreddit, links are all in the description down below. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.